Google Calendar is chock full of nifty little features that will probably delight you. That's today on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? Dotto Tech, it makes tech easy so you can do more. More what? Well, I've been thinking about taking up yoga. You could consider that. Now, before we begin looking at a lot of the really neat features built into Google Calendar, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to this channel and while you're at it, consider hitting the notification button so you do not miss any of the videos that we publish on a weekly basis. Today, we're going to be talking about Google Calendar and some of the kind of hidden features that I think make it a delight to use. Let's begin by taking a look at how Google Calendar integrates with Gmail. So here's an example. I've got an email here uh, for a speaking engagement that I'm going to do and I have to do some follow-up work on it. I've got the email in my inbox, but it's I'm no, I don't want to deal with it right now. I want to schedule it at a time when I know I have some time to work on it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on the more tab in Gmail and there I can create an event and it's going to create an event out of this email. It's going to incorporate all of the information that it finds in the email in that event. And look here, it's going to populate into the, into the, uh, into the appointment, the text of the email. So I don't have to go back and find the email, although there will be a link to the email if I want to see the original email. And now all I have to do is I just have to pick a time to work on it. And I want to work on this Monday morning uh, at about, let's just say it's, I'm going to put it in for 11 a.m. I'm going to put it in for 11. It's only going to take me half an hour to fill in all the information that they're going to need. And I'm going to save this. So now, oh, it looks to see who else is copied in the email and it sends it to them as well if I choose to. Now, I'm not going to choose to because this is just something that I want to work on, then I'll send the results to them. So I say, do not send, but it would send it through as an appointment to those people if we were actually setting up a meeting that way. So there's some nice functionality in putting together uh, appointments directly out of Gmail. One really nice additional feature to Google Calendar is the ability for you to be able to publish calendars for public consumption. Now, this is especially valuable for calendars that are going to be of public interest. For example, your favorite sports team can publish its calendar and then you will have access to that calendar. If you, if you subscribe to that calendar, that calendar will automatically populate into your calendar. Other examples could be school or religious holidays. There's a wealth of public calendars available plus you can create your own public calendar that can be shared. Say you belong to a community choir and you want to publish a schedule of rehearsals and concerts. You can publish that calendar and everybody that belongs to the choir can subscribe, then they have access. Allow me to show you how. It's pretty simple. If you go into the settings menu under the gear icon, you will there find the ability to go to add a calendar. And when you click on add a calendar, this is where we go to create a brand new calendar, but it's also where you go to browse calendars of interest. Now, if you create and publish your own calendar that others are going to share, you're going to want to then use from URL. You're going to create a URL and we'll show you that in another tutorial. But for now, finding these public calendars is what I wanted to show you. So here we have a list of some of the calendars that are available published that you can find right within Google. So things like religious holidays, Jewish holidays, football, basketball, hockey. Oh, let's go to hockey. Hockey is good. National Hockey League. We'll go into the National Hockey League and choose my hometown team, the Vancouver Canucks. So I can now subscribe to the Vancouver Canucks schedule. If I subscribe to that schedule, when I go there, let me just turn it on. There we go. Then when we go into our calendar, we here have all of the calendars that I'm subscribed to. If I turn on the Vancouver Canucks, you will see all of the games that the Vancouver Canucks are involved in. Let me go to the month view and that will show you a little more clearly. There we go. We go to a month and now we see that on the 2nd of, or the 20th of February, the Avalanche play in Vancouver. And the cool thing here is because of the way that they, they publish the information on the calendar, uh, if you go back, you can actually see the scores of the games that have already happened here. They beat the Colorado Avalanche are playing them again, two games in close succession. But this is a great way for you to be able to, again, populate your calendar with items of interest and useful nature to you. Here's a very cool feature that many people don't know is in Google Calendar. 
the ability to have a daily agenda emailed to you first thing in the morning so you can open your email and see exactly what's in your upcoming list of things to do. Here's my agenda that was sent to me 5 a.m. on Friday morning with a list of all of my appointments that I have on my calendar. Working out, a Zoom call with a friend, lunch with a buddy, and then... Oh, recording some demos for the YouTube channel. So this is sent to me on a daily basis. So uh, when you wake up first thing in the morning, if you just wanna check your calendar, you don't wanna log in say to your calendar on your phone, you have an email with all of your agenda items sent to you. It's a great way to stay on top of things. And you can also set this up so that your daily agenda is perhaps sent to an assistant or somebody else that needs to know what you're doing each day. Now let me show you how you go about doing this because it's a little bit obtuse getting to this particular control. Uh, as most things in Google Calendar, you start under the gear menu, go into settings, and you would spend a fair bit of time kind of poking around looking for the ability to send an agenda here. You have to select the calendar that you want the agenda sent from. That is the key to this particular feature. And if we scroll down, we will find daily agenda right there that it will be emailed to us. You can say none or you can have it emailed to you here. Uh, but make sure the key is that you go to the calendar that you want to have emailed to you. Daily agenda. It helps keep you on track. It gets really frustrating playing calendar tag when you try and organize a meeting with another busy person. Now, Google Calendar can, in some cases, help to streamline that entire process if you end up sharing your calendar with the other person. Now, this is probably only gonna work with family members and team members, people who you work quite closely with because you're not gonna be sharing your calendar with total strangers, but for people who are close to you, here is how it works. When you go to create a new event, when you add a guest to that event, so this is basically the people who you're gonna be uh, having your appointment with, and I'm gonna add Shannon, my wife here, because she shares her calendar with me, watch what happens when we go to book a time. I click on that, uh, suggested times, and what Google Calendar does is it looks at my calendar, looks at her calendar, looks for non-committed time, and gives me options of non-committed time. So this gives us the best chance of streamlining the appointment making process because Google Calendar recognizes, at least as far as your calendar is concerned at this point, these times are open. So there's a good chance that you can coordinate. Now, the more people that you add, the less choices you're going to have and the more valuable it's going to be because it's going to start to parse out all of the times that people are booked and you're not going to be looking at those and having to have them come back and have that, that circle and that cycle of, no, I'm not available that day. And then working your way back and forth and you play email or telephone tag or texting tag until you finally find a time that works for everybody. This will help streamline that process um, immensely. But the key is to this particular feature is you have to have shared calendars. You have to be sharing each other's calendar. Google's built a lot of extra features into the appointment area within Google Calendar. Uh, let me show you one thing that I quite like, and this is especially useful if you're booking meetings and you're wanting to set an agenda and make sure everybody's on the same page and that your meetings are far more productive than they might otherwise be. Now, certainly you can still email agendas and still email information back and forth, but think how useful it is for the key information in a meeting to be contained right within the appointment that is in Google Calendar. Well, let me show you. So here in the appointment area, as you're setting it up, you've got a full HTML editor that allows you to incorporate all sorts of valuable in content and information into, uh, into the actual appointment. So you can say, today we are going to discuss so item one, item about something, more stuff and work on this document. So watch this. Of course, it helps if I spell everything right. There we go. All right, so first of all, let's take these first two and let's make it into, uh, let's first the ones and make it into an ordered list. Ah, isn't that nice? Looks fantastic. Now, as far as the, or the document goes, I can go and I can attach a do an attachment, which I can upload a file if I choose, or it also immediately, because it's part of the Google ecosphere, it also says, oh, here's all of your files that are in Google Drive. Do you want to share this file and say, yeah, we're going to be working on the newsletter copy. So there it is. I select that. And so now the newsletter is attached 
to the appointment as well. So people can go and they can preview that content, they can read through all of this information, they can prepare. If they have to add notes, they can edit it. Here's one other idea that you can do with this field is you can take the notes for the meeting within the field. That way you can always go back and find the meeting notes based on the date that you had the meeting. Now, that probably is not super important if you use another tool like a OneNote or an Evernote or even using Google Docs to take all of your meeting notes, but it might work well in your workflow. This ability to be able to add rich content into the actual uh, agenda or the appointment uh, that you set up within Google Calendar is, I think, another real big benefit of Google Calendar. Well, those are just a few of my favorite features that are built into Google Calendar, but there are so many more. The key is you need to dive into a tool like Google Calendar, poke around and discover some of these hidden gems for yourselves. And if you find something that we haven't covered, we'd love to hear about it. Let us know in the comments below. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming the castle. <laughs>